Good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone today. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about my research that's ongoing with some indigenous communities in the Great Lakes region of the US. Um, I'm Eric Greenlee. I'm a second year graduate student in computer science, and I'm also a BBISS graduate fellow. So very happy to have all that support. <laughs> um, but yeah, today I'm going to talk about my research and some lessons learned from doing community engaged research that I think generalize and uh, translate well into other disciplines potentially. Um, and so a little bit of background about the project. Um, wild rice called Monomen in the Ojibwe language is very culturally central to the Ojibwe people. It's the reason that they ended up in the Great Lakes region. Um, they had a prophecy that they would end up in the place where the food grew on water. Um, and so it's very important for both subsistence and then also for ceremony. And it's facing a myriad of environmental threats. Climate change, you know, naturally, but then also uh, land use change, development, mining, a whole, a whole bunch of things. And um, people have a lot of knowledge and ties to the land, but there's not always the data to back up those claims. And so one of the roles that I've tried to play as an engineer, as a computer scientist, is to translate that knowledge into data that they can use to enact their treaty rights. Um, and so I just want to talk about the three months that I spent up there over the summer. Like we kind of flipped the paradigm of research rather than developing something and then going to the community and pre presenting it to them being like, oh, here you go, like mission accomplished. Um, I spent three months with them co-designing and imagining what the sensor would do together so that it would hopefully be useful and we're deploying it next month. So very excited to see how that goes. Um, but just a few anecdotes that speak to, I think, some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Um, the first one is I kind of went into the summer romanticizing what some of their goals and objectives and how they would want the sensor to look would be like. Um, and so I went in, you know, thinking, oh, they're indigenous. They'll want something that's like really discreet and blends in with the environment and like sits right in the rice and is, you know, no one knows it's there. Um, but I hosted a series of workshops over the summer with people who are rice chiefs who are out there like monitoring the rice all the time. And something that they really advocated for was to make it bright and make it flashy and make it look like, you know, there's blinking lights and people are out there watching it um, and make it neon and bright. Um, and so I thought that was a really good lesson for me to never assume what my stakeholders wanted, never assume what the community wanted, and that the only way to do that is not behind the lab, you know, not, not behind the computer, but out there in the field just talking with people. And so that was you know, a good lesson. Lesson for me, something I knew, but not had, maybe not had internalized completely. Um, the second lesson is that doing community-engaged research can help to motivate future research. So we had this one project, um, but in doing that, I tagged along with folks as they went and deployed other sensors in the field. And one sensor was a trail camera that we drove for an hour to get to a river and then canoed for an hour to get to the site where this partner really wanted to get data on what wildlife were going by and what people were going by. And so we installed this trail camera um, that would capture images and send them back over the internet. And it seemed like we got out there and everything was working well, but when you know, and he even had his phone out there and could see that we were getting images. But then we took the hour-long canoe ride back, hour-long drive after that, get back to his desk. It's not working. <laughs> we, can't, we can't talk this thing. Um, and still to this day, I have no idea why it's not working because he hasn't had the time to go back out there and troubleshoot it. And so that has motivated future research for me of how can we build systems that people can actively guarantee are working in the field. How can you have an interface where in the field you know that things are working? Um, and then the last lesson is from just spending time with these partners as well. Um, there's a practice called gathering medicine uh, that the Ojibwe people practice, where you go out and collect different like leaves and different berries to make a uh, tobacco blend, and that's you know medicine. Um, and just spending time doing that has had no direct translation to any research. And I think that that's wonderful and has you know, helped to center me. And it's just a good reminder that not everything needs to be in pursuit of publishing a paper or you know, having some tangible output. But it's helped me to strengthen the connections and to just really understand you know, the, the community. Um, and so I just wanted to share those lessons with you today. And I think I'm about time. So I thank you for your time.